This program is sponsored in part by the National Catholic Society of Foresters. Hello again and welcome to Looking at Social Justice. I'm Jim Grant and it's been my privilege for one year already to host this almost weekly program. We're on our 53rd within that one year. Our seventh guest a year ago was the Reverend Zach Dara, who is the Executive Director of Fresno Interdenominational Refugee Ministries. He's been in that position for five years already, hardly can believe it, which is one-fifth of the history of that fantastic organization celebrating its 25th anniversary as we speak. This ministry has grown and it serves now many, many different diverse and varied refugee uh, communities. It began, of course, with the Southeast Asians, Hmong, Lao, and Cambodian refugees. But over time, it includes many Slavic and African, Syrian, and other refugee groups. I'm so glad that today Zach can be back to tell us what's happened in this last year since our program and especially the urgency of dealing with the refugee crisis nationally because the United States, as everyone knows, has a very, very strong, very, very, I would say, hostile approach to what is the migrant and the refugee situation in the world. I'll let Zach tell us a lot more about that. Zach, could you begin by telling us a little bit about what is really going on at FIRM as we speak? Because in the last year, a lot of programming, a lot of events, a lot of highlights. So review for us what's going on at FIRM as we speak. Absolutely. Well, things stay very busy at FIRM as always. Uh, we continue to see more and more people than ever before. So. Right now, we're averaging about 150 unique walk-ins weekly that come through our door. That doesn't include any of the program participants or any of our regular clients. These are new people walking in the doors from all over the world, many different languages, coming in saying, I need help with whatever oh it might be. Yes. Yes, and so we've seen a lot more as, as, you know, last time I was here, I predominantly talked about the Syrian refugees. Yeah. In doing that, you know, now we have a team of Arabic speakers, and that has opened the doors to many different groups of folks who we now serve, whether they're from Yemen, Afghanistan, Iraq, Saudi Arabia, you know, being a place that provides direct services and support services to Arabic speaking people groups has really just expanded who, who we're serving, who's coming and seeking services at FIRM, and has increased our capacity to serve, uh, I think, what's been an underserved, kind of under the radar population that's in our community here in Fresno. I think Fresno is not quite aware enough of the diversity of our community. We know we speak 100 languages, we know that the school system is filled with a diverse group of students. But that means there's diverse families, and they come from all over. Now, one thing you said you wanted to make us mindful of, and I'll just throw these words out and let you work with them. You've got mission teams, the summer carnival, the beautiful mural, the cultural food festival, and more. Yes. So about <laughs> those items, so we make sure we don't forget them. Sure. What do you want to say about any of that? So we're fresh off of the summer. Summer is a very busy time. It's a fun, exciting, wonderful time at FIRM, but it's very busy. Uh, one of the exciting parts of every summer is our summer carnival event. Uh, this year we saw about 1,200 people that came onto campus. We gave out 500 backpacks. We distributed food and lots of different items, clothing, back to school haircuts. Uh, it was a tremendous event. We have carnival rides, uh, rock wall, uh, all of those kinds of things. Who um, really underwrites or really supports all these bags and haircuts? Yes. Who, who, who sponsors some of this? It's really the churches and the, the people of God here in our community, the communities of faith. And represented there at this event are people from all over the world. You know, we have Syrian refugee families, Afghans, Africans, uh, of course, our, our Syrians. 
uh, Southeast Asia and Hmong, Laotian, Cambodian. I mean, it's a really beautiful, diverse event. And this year was the largest event uh, that we've had thus far, uh, 1,200 people. And every year, I've been here, you know, five years at FIRM, every year we get 100 to 200 more people, 100 to 200 more people. And that's exciting and fun. It adds to the logistics and the, the financial realities of having these events. But uh, we really believe, in, and it's a big part of who we are as a value of bringing people together people that wouldn't normally be together, bringing them together to have a good time at a carnival, uh, to have some needs met, uh, and to be in a place where they feel comfortable, welcome, and, and safe. And that's really what we try to do with these community events. So when you have all this growth, and then you did mention finances, why don't you tell us um, how it is, we'll say it at the end, but we could do it now. How do people, as they hear what you're doing, and what the community is doing. How can they, how can we participate in what Fresno Interdenominational Refugee Ministries is doing in our name, but how can we help? Of course, so there's always financial, there's no doubt. I wouldn't be doing my job if I didn't uh, ask people for financial support. And uh, people can donate online at www.firminc.org and there's a button right there on the page to click donate and they can donate one-time gifts, they can become monthly givers or whatnot. We, of course, also accept you know, checks in the mail at 1940 North Fresno Street, and that's Fresno 93703. But also, you know, people and their time is very valuable to us at FIRM. Over a thousand people a year give their time to serve in some context at FIRM every single year. And so what that does is it makes a, you know, what we think of as a little organization, oh but it God, increases yeah. our ability to impact more people than most organizations our size. And most of these folks are from the faith community here in Fresno. Without being exhaustive, and I, I know this is a bad question, but I sometimes ask bad questions, usually not. <laughs> what would be some of the major sponsoring communities that you really think you know, if there's only a few, I'll mention a few. What right. are some of your biggest supporters? Sure, definitely the San Joaquin Presbytery. And that's the group of Presbyterian churches here in the San Joaquin Valley that have really supported FIRM for 25 years. Oh yeah, because of Sharon. Correct. Beginning with Sharon Stanley, who set such a good, good, good foundation. Absolutely. So the Presbyterians have stayed with it. Absolutely, who no else? doubt about it. The United Church of Christ would be another one I'd have to point out, you know. And if we are really looking at individual churches in our community, uh, University Presbyterian Church is a huge supporter. Sierra Vista Presbyterian Church was actually in Oakhurst, and they're a big financial supporter as well as they bring a couple teams down every year to serve here in Fresno from nice. Oakhurst. Uh, we have even uh, Presbytery from Nevada, the Nevada Presbytery, wow. and I go every single year to connect with the churches there and, and the folks from the Nevada Presbytery, and they give a significant uh, gift every single year uh, from all of their partner churches. The other uh, interesting component, you mentioned the mission teams, yeah. and we have mission teams coming from all over the United States uh, every year. This year, the furthest away was Wisconsin. Uh, we had a church, uh, Greendale Community Church from Greendale, Wisconsin. It's a United Church of Christ church. And they brought a team of 14 individuals and they actually painted an entire building. They built a play set for a Syrian refugee home uh, they, for, for a family. Uh, they did a lot of work on the campus. And these teams also, they typically give a sizable gift to the work that we do. And not only, so not only are they supporting financially, but the people power that, that, are, that they provide to the community is, is significant. And one of the beautiful projects that happened this summer was a church from Danville, uh, Danville Congregational Church. It's also a United Church of Christ church. Wow. And they brought a team and painted a mural on our campus. We have a few murals throughout our campus and in our facilities, but this mural is a beautiful picture of who we are at FIRM and who we are in the work we do in the name of Christ. It's a mural of some hands that are making the form of a heart and it says, we heart refugees. And it's got a scripture passage from Leviticus 19 uh, verse 34 
that really talks and it's a it's a commandment to the people of God to love the foreigner amongst you and to love them as your native born and we really feel like that is the picture that we wow. try to live out in our mission every day that the people that are coming to firm and through our doors they don't feel like they're foreigners uh, they feel as if they are one of us they're welcome we're glad that they're there and we're here to serve them as one of our own, as our neighbor. Now, I'm supposing that at the website, firminc.com. Dot org. Dot org. Yes, sir. Very important because I would have put com. Sure. Dot org. They'll um, be able to see that mural. What else will they see at your website? What more about what you want to talk about is right there for them at firminc.org? Sure. On our website, you can see a rundown of all the varying wraparound services that we provide for folks, explanations of the work we do, whether it's you know our early childhood work, community gardens, our mental health programs, support services, whatever it might be. And really, the very best place to stay updated with everything going on at FIRM is on our Facebook page, uh, which is at uh, facebook.com slash Fresno Refugee Ministries. And we're very active on Facebook. You can see pictures of everything going on and and we update that you know sometimes even daily depending on what's what's going on around wow. firm yes wow. and so we're really excited that mural it's it's prominent on Weldon and Fresno Street as you drive past you you can't miss it and uh, we just hope that it spreads uh, you know love and a message of welcome to refugees in our community and also just as a great forward picture of what we do and and what we're about at firm Speaking of what you do and what you're about, it was wonderful this year at the Islamic Center when we celebrated the Night of Spirituality. And every year there is an organization that receives the Spirit of Abraham Award, which I must admit the diocese received in its first year of that award. But it was great to be there this year and celebrate with you and firm that distinction for what you do for interfaith work. Yes. So yes. Um, could you reprise for us, Zach, part of what you shared that night in reminding us of just how much FIRM has stretched to be able to be so inclusive of a group, namely the Muslim community, yes. um, to, to not lose anything of its Christian base, but to actually only expand it by being able to minister in a profound way sure. with uh, the community of, um, of Islam. Sure. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, well, it was a, you know, a true honor. It's, it's always humbling to receive awards and recognition and things like that. Nobody, uh, in my opinion, that's you know, really serving others uh, out of love and, and, and compassion, or, you know, do it for awards or recognition. Uh, very similar to the ministry of Jesus Christ. Uh, but uh, in serving the Muslim community, you know, for FIRM, that was a new thing. Uh, we brought on Muslim staff. That was a new, new thing. And began serving in a Muslim community that really we did not know a lot about, did not have a lot of relationships, uh, did not really understand a lot of the cultural norms. So it was a great time of learning, but also for us, and this is what I talked about at the Night of Spirituality. It was a response to, uh, I shared scriptures from John 14 and, and 13, uh, where Jesus says, look, there's a new command. Love one another. That's, that's, the, that's the new commandment I give to you. And so if that's the thing that Jesus is commanding us to do, we're going to do that in an unconditional way, regardless of if someone's Muslim, Buddhist, uh, or any other faith group or whatnot. And so... In the Muslim community, a story that was shared that uh, I think shows who we are and why we're doing what we do. But one of the challenges in the beginning was that, you know, our Muslim staff had our business cards with our logo on it. And firm's logo has a prominent cross. And it's because the reason w why we do the work we do is because of Jesus Christ and his calling to us uh, to love the foreigner amongst us. But it was becoming a barrier. Uh, to providing services in the Muslim community. And so as we had those frank discussions as a staff, uh, I made the decision that, okay, if that's a barrier to serving someone, 
let's just take it off the cart and let's remove it. And so our Muslim staff in the first year, they just had the name firm uh, on their business cards. For some, that, that's a challenging thought and idea. Uh, but for me, I think if there's any barrier or boundary to serving someone that's in need, I want to remove those barriers and boundaries no matter what they are. And I, the interesting thing is that years later now, we have since added the logo back onto the cards and no one cares. <laughs> and so I think the, it was a great picture of just trust that these are people in an organization that can be trusted. We're not there to convert Muslims to Christianity. Uh, we're there to reflect what we believe is the calling of our faith, uh, uh, you know, whether that's in interfaith work or, or otherwise. And, and that's what we did. And I, I'm willing to remove those things uh, no matter what they are if it is to serve somebody and to love them. And I know that the love of Jesus is what shone through to folks that were receiving oh. services. So those kind of things are reflective wow. of who we are, you know, and, and the Apostle Paul once wrote that, you know, I have become all things to all people that I might save some, right? And I think in those scriptures for us at Firm, it's like, well, whatever we've got to do to share the love of Christ, that, that is what we're going to do. And I know in evangelical circles, some people would staunchly disagree oh, with yeah. that. Uh, are you ashamed of the cross? Are you ashamed of the gospel? And I would say, no, not at all. Uh, we're in the business of living out the gospel in action. And whatever gets in the way of that, we are going to ensure that those boundaries and barriers are removed so that we can do that. You know, it was so wonderful to know that you have grown so much in these five years that you've been there. Help me figure, even from last year, you've grown in your programming and in your ability to serve more. Has the staff been able to also grow or is it that the staff is doing more with, with no increase of staffing or how is your staffing growth? Yeah, so we have, we have added a number of staff members. So, you know, that's always a dollars challenge, right? Um, but yeah, we've probably added, I'm gonna guess five or six staff from last time we wow. talked. And you know, it, it's required to meet the client volume. And we're about to add two more staff starting wow. October 1st, and that would be in the Refugee Youth Mentoring Program that we just received funding from the uh, state through the uh, office, or I'm sorry, the Refugee Bureau uh, office here in the state of California. So we'll have two additional staff serving 40 youth, age 15 to 24, and most of those youth will be from the Syrian community, no doubt. Wow. And at least from the Arabic speaking uh, community here in Fresno. Wow. And so, you know, it's, it's awesome to see God provide the resources that uh, we need to do the work that we do. And what I always say and typically say is that if we stay true to the work God has given us to do, God will certainly provide the resources to do that work. And that's the level of faith that we try to operate within. Uh, that we operate, you know, within the the reality for us that this is work that is pleasing to God, and God will bless and sustain uh, the work that we do as as long as we stay faithful to Him and the mission that He's given to us. Is there anything else you want to talk about regarding firm locally before we do do that topic of looking at? crisis in the world, the, the refugee, the migrant reality, and what some countries are doing, but it's almost what they're not doing. So uh, anything else about your local work before we start giving you that chance to talk about this phenomenon of world migration and what, what we're doing in response? We're just excited about celebrating our 25th year anniversary this year. That's a big milestone for any organization. Oh, yeah. And so we will be having our 25th anniversary celebration on November 1st. Nice. At 6 o'clock p.m. at the what's now called 
the Reverend Dr. Sharon Stanley Ray Center, which we named yeah. uh, after our founding director last year uh, at our annual event. So uh, there's actually no tickets. Uh, we're, not, we're not selling tickets. People can just come wow. to celebrate with us. Of course, we're also, beyond celebrating, also trying to raise money. There's oh, yeah. no doubt about it. But we'll have cultural foods and, and uh, music. And Sharon will be coming herself. Oh, nice. Which is exciting. And we will have you know, a dedicated time of just celebrating the last 25 years of firm right. work. So that's very exciting. And we're looking wow. forward to that. Great. Feast of All Saints, a perfect day to celebrate 25 years of tremendous ministry yes. from from firm. So about the world situation, where did you want to begin sharing um, what you know is uh, we're going to be hearing details next month in September? Yes. Uh, tell us something about what, what's going on. So we're in the greatest world refugee crisis since World War II. There are 25 million refugees in the world and about one and a half million right now in desperate need of resettlement somewhere. That's staggering in light of being here in the United States, which is the wealthiest country in the world. And yet in this current administration, they have cut drastically the refugee resettlement numbers uh, the last two years. So the first year was at 45,000 and this year we're, we're at 30,000, and both years did not meet the cap. So I'm assuming this year we will not hit 30,000. I'm gonna guess it'll be in the 25 range. And it's been particularly challenging because this number is, can be changed every year. Uh, our historical average at this point is 95,000, but this country has resettled as many as 208,000 refugees in one year. I believe that occurred in 1980 uh, that with everything that was going on in Guatemala and El Salvador in those, in those times. And so seeing just this type of rhetoric, uh, legislation, narrative, et cetera, that is really pushing out and keeping out refugees is really challenging. Uh, we also, of course, fancy ourselves some type of Christian nation still and there is no doubt that this is counter the message and calling of Jesus Christ to his people uh, to love the foreigner, to love their neighbor, to fight for justice, to do justice, to serve the least of these. We could probably talk about 50 or 100 passages mm -hmm. uh, that would be counter this type of, of message uh, and legislation coming from our nation. So I just have been doing some reading and there's been some recent news that there are rumors of even having zero refugee resettlement next year, that the cap would be zero. There would be no refugee resettlement. There's also been numbers thrown around such as 3,000 or 10,000. These are just horrendous realities of the, the environment that we're in right now in the United States. You know, there's great humanitarian realities to resettling refugees here in the United States. There are also political uh, and other forces that weigh on the side of resettling refugees in the United States. I read about one challenge right now because of the uh, Iraqi war. There's about 100,000 Iraqis that would be refugees that would be resettled in the United States that were, we made an agreement with, that fought with our military alongside, that were either military, actually wow. fighting militarily, but also translators, interpreters, spies, et cetera, that did that on behalf of the United States government, that were promised that they would be given safe passage, that they would be taken care of in the United States. And if these types of policies and things continue on, we're now, we're saying, oh, well, we're no longer resettling refugees or whatnot. That has serious implications with our relations oh, yeah. with foreign nations. And we have a resettlement infrastructure in our country, Jim, that has uh, you know, about 40 years of, of building and, and experience and expertise and networks for resettlement that would be completely decimated. It would essentially eliminate 
those organizations. And these are organizations like Catholic Charities, which is one that would be very obviously close, not only to this community, but to this oh, broadcast, yeah. and to, to this work here <laughs> at the diocese. Yeah. Uh, Catholic Charities, uh, World Relief, International Rescue Committee, uh, these are just a few of the names of the nine organizations that would essentially, I would imagine, have to close most of their doors. And that's already been decimated with what has happened with the refugee numbers this year and, and the, the year prior. And so this is sad, these are sad days, sad times, in a, in a time in the world where the United States could be a leader in this place, are in fact doing the exact opposite. There was a, a very strong article in the Fresno Bee, um, an opinion piece back on August 19th, not long ago. Cuccinelli is wrong. Poor huddled masses are an inextricable part of U.S. history. And then it goes on in this, um, uh, from the, it's really from the LA Times, their editorial that we adopted in Fresno, makes the point that whatever Cuccinelli said about if they can uh, stand on their own and don't become a public charge, hmm. as if he's rewriting Emma Lazarus's yes. magnificent poem. The other person I want to mention besides Emma Lazarus who gives us that that tremendous poem that is not just uh, pie in the sky, but we should read it the way she said it at the end. It's the last part of her sonnet. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free, the wretched refuse of your teeming shore. Send these, the homeless, temper-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. Mm. We're not doing that. No. We have an approach that is the opposite of what Pope Francis has written in his presentation for the world on the celebration of the 105th World Day of Migrants and Refugees. And what he proposes in this message this year that will be celebrated on the 29th of September. But in one part, he says, and I remind you of four verbs, welcome, protect, promote, and integrate. These brothers and sisters who have such challenges posed by contemporary migration, we must reach out, he says, to our brothers and sisters. I want to thank Zach Darrow once again for everything that he and firm have done for 25 years. We look forward to be with you on November 1st. Can't wait to celebrate that great moment. But until then, Zach, God bless, and let's do what we can to turn this administration around. Absolutely. Thank you, Jim. God bless. Thanks.